Hello, I'm Dr. Anil Gudi, and today I'll be talking about a very new concept, a concept that often challenges our understanding of reproductive medicine, especially in IVF. It questions our understanding into how recruitment takes place and how the ovary is not a fixed phase organ, but is an equally dynamic organ which does fascinating things which we have slowly started to understand. What do you, does happen? We know that a large number of our stimulated cycles are either in the follicular phase, with either pretreatment, with the pill, or with Proganova. Then we have our down-regulated cycles, which disrupts the later anterior follicular phase recruitment causing a better synchronization at times. And we have our flare protocols, we have our protocols that start with the period, everything focused on to the first few days of recruitment. Our belief has been that if we can induce stimulation of ovaries and recruitment of follicles in the early follicular phase, then will be able to work with nature. We often forget that nature does things differently. Especially in women who are getting older, who are coming to the end of their reproductive cycle, or women with a lower reserve. I have this concept that a low AMH has nothing to do with fertility. It has been proved quite convincingly, but tells you more about recruitment and availability of antral follicles. That is something which you have to understand, that the role of AMH is to pull follicles back. And as the AMH starts declining, sometimes more and more antral follicles start growing. So the question we need to ask is, can we make use of this concept in certain women who do very poorly in their follicular phase start. Now, for those who have done the, co the course in which I lecture, will, have, will remember the chasing of the anterior follicle, which is a far bigger picture that we give. And there you will realize that this is only a part of the chasing the anterior follicle protocols. Now, let's look at the history. 32-year-old woman, having had five IVF cycles, AMH of 4.03, picomolar liter, normal FSH and LH, has always had stimulation in the first few days of a cycle, ranging from 450 to a mild stimulation. The maximum number of eggs she has got, or oocytes she has got, is three. The minimum has been one. And I saw this woman who came stating whether she should go for donor eggs. Incidentally, I scanned her around day 20 of a cycle. And then I found 9 to 10 antral follicles with a corpus luteum. It's not very unusual, but you have to remember almost all her previous scans had been in follicular phase, day 1 or day 2. About 30% of my cycles are non-follicular phase starts, which means they are in the luteal phase or at random starts. How we select it is a different formula altogether. Now, what did we do? I decided that for three days, I gave her an antagonist. Why? Because I saw the blood flow in the corpus luteum being extensive and my aim was, can we knock off the corpus luteum? So we decided to, that to knock off the corpus luteum and started giving clomiphene. Again, please forget the concept that clomiphene is used in the first few days of your cycle. No. You, a, a, a pituitary which is, has gone back to sleep can be woken up. And we give clomiphene in the later half of the cycle, starting from day 23-24 very different concept. What this allowed us to do along with, with sorry, uh, uh, HMG, 
is it allowed us to start the stimulation by two different drugs. And if you have a look at on the day four, day five of stimulation, there was a more rapid growth. And you'd say, oh, on day four of stimulation, how can you have a 10 to 12 millimeter follicle? Take a step back. When I scanned her, you already had a recruitment occur in the luteal phase. And that's the beauty of these treatments, that you can detect follicular changes occurring at different times of the cycle. So we continued the stimulation and we restarted the antagonist, as you see on the, on the slide. And you look at the E2, the E2 rises from 1,412 to 2,900. By the 16th, uh, 14th day, which effectively is about day 10 or day 12 of stimulation, we see a good follicular growth. The corpus luteum is no longer active. The blood flow has gone down. We got nine oocytes, out of which seven were metaphase two, and we were able to freeze two good quality blastocysts. Now, what did it tell us? That five cycles in which we were not able to get to more than three metaphase two oocytes, we we're able to get in one cycle what the previous five cycles could do. This is one of the beauties of looking at how recruitment occurs. As your AMH declines, do not lose hope. Do not tell patients you need egg donation. These are young patients. Egg donation is challenging. Often women accept it. The reason is because in a relationship, often they feel that that's the only way they'll have a baby. As long as you're young, as long as you're less than 37 years of age, follicle recruitment can be reviewed. You will see that you can use multiple different protocols which will allow you to stimulate the ovaries. There will be failures. There will be certain cases where you will not feed, find eggs. But in some cases, you will be able to stimulate these ovaries much better. Once again, bring into question that antral follicles are not recruited in the last few days of the cycle. Antral follicles are recruited continuously. And there, therein comes the concept which I coin as chasing the antral follicle. And I hope that those of you who come, and, come to the courses will see how we slightly change the entire concept of reproductive medicine in IVF. Once again, my aim here is to try and inculcate that IVF is about asking the question why, and then it becomes a fascinating branch. Thank you.